Right. I remember after I got out of the hospital, Dr. King asked me to come over to meet him. He wanted to talk with me. So I, it was over at uh, Ms. Ford Tyson's house. And it was in the living room. And it was just the two of us. And we just had a conversation. It must have been for about 15 minutes, just sitting there, just mm -hmm. talking about what was going on, my future, yeah. my future plans. And at 14, I didn't have a whole lot of plans. But we talked about it, and it, it's the highlight of, of that civil rights era. I think just to know he asked for me to come to talk with him. We had a conversation, just the two of us. So it was something to remember. Amazing. And what were your plans? You say you didn't have many plans. I didn't have many plans. During that time, mm -hmm. I think I, wanted to, I probably wanted to be an opera singer. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. But that changed once I went with him Cooperman and realized that um, there's a lot of time that goes into being a, a musician in general. So I changed my mind. Then I decided I wanted to be a reporter. That changed. Uh, once I got married and moved to Miami, I didn't get a, wasn't going to get a job as a reporter. I was an English major. So um, I started uh, applying for positions at different um, poverty centers. And you know, I was going to help you know, the people, our people. Uh, but the day I decided that's what I was going to do, I also completed an application to become a teacher. The very next day, I was given a job. So the rest is history. I became that teacher. And um, fortunately, I was able to move up within the profession uh, through the years. Um, I was a teacher for only about seven years, and I became an assistant principal, then a uh, principal for 14 years, and regional director, and then uh, finally an assistant superintendent for leadership development for Miami-Dade County Public Schools. And from that position, I retired. And um, I've been enjoying retirement ever since. Oh, wonderful. 